we are looking at continuous probability distributions, continuous random variables, as opposed to, what's the opposite of continuous in our context? Discrete. discrete very good. Um, but you've noticed, like, we try and, like, straddle this world, okay? Discrete and continuous, we kind of have to sometimes consider a continuous situation using a discrete lens. And we did that in the first example, um, looking at the runners, I think. The runners and times, and we're like, let's just break this into discrete chunks, because then we can think about it. Um, and likewise, sometimes you start with discrete data, but then you're like, actually, there's like a curvy shape to this thing. Actually, it looks more like a continuous thing, right? So there's kind of this shifting of perspectives. Now, we then got to this point, and I'm just going to continue from where you were yesterday. We got to this point of saying, if you want to work out a probability um, of some range of values happening, right? And you don't have to rewrite this because I presume it's two or three lines above what I've written in, in your book, right? Um, we can say, if you have a function that will match the shape of your probability distribution, then you're finding an area under a curve. And what do we use to find areas under curves? Integrate. We integrate. Fantastic. So I'm going to integrate from my lower boundary, A, to my upper boundary, B, and then off you go. Right? But what we did say was, not just anything can be f of x. Um, by the way, what, we gave it a special name, which starts with p, d, and f. What do we call f of x? Do you remember? A probability density function, right? Very good. Um, not just any function can be a probability density function. And we very, very quickly had a look at the two conditions, right? We explained them, but in a nutshell, number one, you have to have a function that is where? Where is this function going to exist? Um, between. It's going to be, think, think. It's got to be this is the first condition, right? Probably, <laughs> thanks, Tyler, some dance moves, right? Um, it's going to be positive, right? We don't, we don't have any such thing as negative probabilities. Something can't happen, you just say probability zero. Okay? So we know that's a condition. And then the other one was, which some of you were getting to, if you take all the probabilities, which is to say, look at all the probabilities, oh, that's not an eight, that's an infinity. All the probabilities from as far left as you can go to as far right as you can go, you add them all up and we should end up with one. one. Fantastic, okay, now these are the two conditions that we're trying to see whether this thing meets, okay? Does um, f of x, f of x equals four x squared and it's defined in a particular interval from one to four. Does it meet these two conditions? Okay, now the question does say, um, is it, right? But I'm actually interested in not just a yes-no answer. I want to know why, okay? Uh, so 4x squared, thankfully, is not a complicated looking function. And when I think about this guy, right, um, is it greater than or equal to zero, I feel like the easiest way to prove to someone that it is or it isn't is to just draw the relevant part of the relevant function. Okay, so if you haven't already, draw yourself up a little set of axes, right? Now what I'm going to do is uh, two things. Firstly, actually I've left off part of this axis, which I need. Um, firstly, I'm just going to draw what I know 4x squared to look like, and then I'm going to secondly restrict the domain. Okay, so I'll do this, and then I'll say, okay, well, which part am I interested in? Okay, so it's what kind of shape? 4x squared. It's a parabola. Can you tell me anything else about it? It's, it's, it's thin. thin. It's, it's pretty thin. It's going to be narrow, right? We remember this from our um, dilation and stuff like that. What else can you tell me about it? It's so concave up. Uh, concave up because this is positive. Okay, hold on. What have I got? Parabola. It's thin. It's concave up. Where, where is it? Like, is it, is it high? Is it low? Y equals zero. It's going to be, what's at the origin? The origin's important. The origin is the, it's the vertex of this parabola. Right? We have words for this. I'm like, I need to know what part of it is at zero, zero. So I'm going to draw something like this. Okay? And you're like, hey, sir, I said it was supposed to be thin. I know, but I don't have any scale on this at the moment. And it's just easier for me to visualize that it's a parabola like so. Okay? So that's what the whole 4x squared looks like. But I don't want the whole thing, do I? I only want this specific domain. So I'm going to go and I'm going to say, well, let's call this 1. Right? And then I want to have some sort of consistent scale, so I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. So 2, 3, 4. And in between these boundaries, uh, let's see, I'm going to eyeball that there. This that I'm putting in black, whoopsie daisy, this is my f of x. Okay, so that's stuff that I drew in orange around that. It's kind of like, hey, that tells you the shape. Um, but like I mentioned to you before, often the practical way that we achieve this is we say, ah, oh, this part looks like my data, the rest of it, just ignore it. 
just treat it as if it's zero. Okay, so if you want it, you could actually say it's just going to be a flat horizontal line over here and a flat horizontal line over here. That's your probability density function, at least we hope so. Let's have a look at the first condition. Does it meet that first condition? Yes. It absolutely does. Look, it's, it's all above the axis. In fact, even before we restricted it, it was all um, greater than or equal to zero. So cool, I'm going to get my green pen out. Tick, one condition. But then we've got to try out the second one, right? Now, we don't need to integrate from negative infinity to infinity because we have narrower boundaries than that, right? So therefore, I'm going to take this integral from where to where? From one to four. And I'm going to pop in 4x squared, see what I get. Okay. So 4x squared dx, and at this point you can almost forget that this has anything to do with probability or statistics. You're like, it's just integration, which I already know. So let's have a go. Um, what is the primitive that you end up with when you integrate 4x squared? 4x cubed on 3, very good. There's my primitive, okay, so I'm going to go from 1 to 4. Um, that 4 thirds is just a constant, so I'm going to factorize that out the front. And then I'm going to evaluate what's left, which is x cubed. Okay, so I've got 4 cubed take away 1 cubed. So far so good? Is that okay? Okay, upper boundary, lower boundary. Um, 4 cubed is 64. 1 cubed is 1. So 64 take away 1 is 63. Yeah? That's okay. Um, common factor of 3 leaves me with 21 up the top, so that's 84. Have I met my second condition? No, I very emphatically have not because I'm supposed to add up to 1. If this really were a probability density function, my answer here would be 1. So unfortunately, sorry, this is no good. It's not a probability density function. At least it isn't um, in this domain, right? I wonder, just as a little exercise for you to have to think about, could you take this same function and maybe, maybe change these numbers so that you did get an answer of 1? Because then it would be a probability density function. Okay? Have a think about that and we'll come back to it.